Hallelujah. He sends from heaven and saves us, rebuking those. Oh, yes, Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We trust you, Father. God sends his love to his faithful ones. His faithfulness is always there for us. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Bless you. I will praise you at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouths. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Wayman African Methodist Episcopal Church Virtual Worship. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. tell it on the mountain. Let us bow and let us pray in humble adoration unto the Lord. O Lord, how excellent is thy name. How great is our Savior. King of kings, Savior of the world, high tower, Prince of peace, Lord of Lord. Thank you for being with us this day, Lord. Thank you for your hope, your peace, your joy, your love, your righteousness, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your son keeping us safe. We continue to commune with you daily, Lord, every day. May your Holy Spirit pour out on us. Your oil, Lord, may it run down and may it fill our cups till it overflows, Father. As it overflows in you, Lord Jesus, we fill our hearts with worship, Lord Jesus, with song, with prayer, and with hearing the word of the Lord, seeing you, Father, in the word, Lord. We worship you in prayer, in song. Thank you for circumcising our hearts, that we love you each and every day more and more. May this service bring much joy unto you, Father, much joy and love unto your people, unto your children. May we worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. Bless it all, the whole service of prayers and the preaching and our pastor and each and every person here today, Lord, as we commune with you. Thank you for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Old Testament reading, Isaiah 61, 10 through 62 4 i am overwhelmed with joy in the lord my god 
for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. I am like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or bride with her jewels. The sovereign Lord will show his justice to the nations of the world. Everyone will praise him. His righteousness will be like a garden in early spring with plants springing up everywhere. Because I love Zion, I will not keep still. Because my heart yearns for Jerusalem, I cannot remain silent. I will not stop praying for her until her righteousness shines like the dawn and her salvation blazes like a burning tor torch. The nations will see your righteousness. World leaders will be blinded by your glory and you will be given a new name by the Lord's own mouth. The Lord will hold you in his hand for all to see a splendid crown in the hand of God. Never again will you be called the forsaken city or the la desolate land. Your new name will be the city of God's delight and the bride of God. For the Lord delights in you and will claim you as his bride. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verses 14 through 16. But thank God he has made us his captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphant procession. Now, he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere, like a sweet, sweet perfume. Our lives are Christ-like fragrance rising up to God. But this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. To those who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. But... To those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. And who is this adequate? Who and who is adequate for such a task as this? Amen. Praise the Lord. We will have a prayer service on December 31st. Uh, and you may go to the website, Wayman Dash amec.com and there will be a link there for you to watch the prayer service on December 31st. Amen. We ask that you would continue to give grace um, graciously. Amen. Let us pray. Wonderful and awesome God, you are welcome in this service. You are welcome in our lives. You are welcome, God, to take control. Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done and all that you are doing. Lord, we pray for those that are battling COVID-19 and God, those that are battling the after effects of COVID-19. Lord, we ask that you would heal their body and restore their health. Lord, we pray for those that are experiencing financial difficulties uh, because of COVID-19. God, those that are underemployed and unemployed. God, we just ask that you would open the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings that they don't have room enough to receive. And then, God, we pray for those that are grieved, bereaved, and mourning this morning. God, we ask that you would comfort them, that you would wrap your arms of care and love around them. You would provide for their every need. God, we pray for our children that you would bless them, that you would open their eyes that they may see your face. God, we pray that we would see your face, that we would see your action. Lord, we pray for those that this week that are facing the surgeon's needle. God, we ask that you uh, would be with the anesthesiologist, you'd be with the doctor, they would have complete wisdom, knowledge of the situation. God, we, we pray for health and healing. We pray that in the new year, God, that you would show up in a mighty and marvelous and miraculous way. God, we pray for the health of our people. We pray for the health of our nation. God, we pray 
that the um, Congress and, and the president can get on one accord and pass the bill so that there can be relief uh, for, for people that are dealing with the uh, uh, negative monetary effects of COVID-19. Oh God, we just ask that you would be in the midst of all that we do. Lord, we ask that you would have your way in this service. Lord, speak a word. Speak a word of encouragement, a word of love, a, lo a word of justice this morning. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. The Lord is come, let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare him new, and have a nature seen, and have a nature seen, and have a heaven and nature seen. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their souls employ. What fields and floods, what fields and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love let us pray Lord, speak for your servants are listening. We need to hear a word from you, Lord. Use me to your honor and to your glory. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. To see Jesus, Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Reading from the New International Version. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon. He was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. 
The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against. And so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. Luke chapter two, verses 22 through 40. The pandemics of 2020 have disturbed our semblance of peace. Fear and anxiety have run rampant this year. Christians have not been exempted from fear and, and anxiety. The not knowing and the not having of good information has been overwhelming. In the midst of all that happened in 2020, we held on to our faith and trust in God. God brought us through the vicissitudes of 2020. And here we are on the last Sunday of 2020, thanking and praising God. We have not come to the end of either pandemic, but we can see that there are better days ahead. We must pray that the vaccines are equitably distributed, that God's grace and mercy prevails while we wait for the vaccine, and those experiencing financial hardship will receive relief soon. And according to Amos chapter 5, verse 24, we are also praying that we would see a mighty flood of justice, an endless river of righteous living. As we close out this chaotic year, the hand of God is moving and bringing about change for the good of the world. It is our responsibility to join God at work for the good of a more fair and just society. We have witnessed God's grace and mercy personally because we are here to tell the story of 2020. Now let's see what our text, uh, which is titled um, The Presentation of Jesus in the Temple, can teach us this morning. Joseph and Mary, the parents of Jesus, were rooted and grounded in a very pious faith that sought to honor God. They observed the law of Moses and took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem to present their firstborn to God and to perform the rite of purification. They bought a pair of doves for their burnt offering and sin offering, which is what poor people use for their sacrificial offering. There was a devout and righteous man of God named Simeon, whom the Holy Spirit was on him, and who was told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before seeing the Messiah. He was expectantly waiting for the consolation of Israel and the confirmation of what the Holy Spirit had said. 
moved by the Holy Spirit, Simeon went to the temple. And when he saw Jesus, he picked him up, uttered a psalm of praise and spoke blessings upon Joseph and Mary. And then he spoke to Mary. This is what he said, sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentile and the glory of your people, Israel. You see, Simeon praised God for fulfilling his promise to bring salvation for the Gentiles and Israel. Jesus will bring truth to light. And we will come to a point of choosing to believe or not to believe, to serve or not to serve, to follow or not to follow. We will have to choose whom we will serve, Jesus or the gods of this world. Simeon walked with God and he fulfilled his calling of seizing of seeing Jesus. So he was ready to leave this earth. He had seen Jesus, the Messiah, and the source of salvation. The parents of, of Jesus marveled at Simeon's words. Maybe they had not fully comprehended who Jesus was and what his ministry would be to the world. Simeon then let Mary know that he would be opposed and she would be hurt deeply like a sword piercing her soul. <clears throat> there would be trials and disappointments because Jesus would cause the rising and the falling of many in Israel. You see, Jesus is the light of the world, a revelation to the Gentiles and glory to Israel. And anytime you shine the light, there's going to be shadows. The Gentiles will be blessed for believing and following Jesus. Israel would be a glory to the world because Jesus would save those who trust and believe in him. Jesus is the only way to the kingdom. And we must follow Jesus if we are going. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 16b, every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. The elderly prophetess, Anna, makes her way over to the baby Jesus. She was a widow who spent her time fasting and praying and worshiping in the temple. She gives thanks to God and tells everyone, that she has seen the redemption of Israel. The Messiah has come. She bore witness to the fact that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus is the salvation of God and the expression of God's will. Uh, Anna's ministry of intercession allowed her to see Jesus. You know, some of our most Productive years and spiritual service to God may come after retirement. Joseph and Mary returned home to Nazareth in Galilee, and Jesus grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. What, what do I mean when I say that the ministry of intercession allows us to see Jesus. What do I mean when I say that the ministry of intercession allows us to see Jesus? Well, let's break it down. Intercession is the action of intervening on behalf of another. Webster Dictionary. Uh, my, 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 my definition. Intercession is going to God in prayer for someone else. The ministry of intercession opens our eyes and the heart of our understanding to the work of God. Paul says it like this in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 and 18. 
I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. The ministry of intercession is a joy and an honor to pray for others. You can bless folks and bear much fruit through the ministry of intercession. The ministry of intercession is so important that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God right now making intercession for you and me. In the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, it tells us Jesus is able to save complete completely those who come to God through him because he lives to intercede for them. The ministry of intercession will open our eyes and keep us connected to the heart of God. To see Jesus, <laughs> to see Jesus is a gift of serving, worshiping, praising, praying, and fasting. You, you see, worshiping, Praising, praying, and fasting sensitizes our spirit to the move of God, to the move of the Holy Spirit, to see Jesus in the midst of all that is going on in your life is the blessing. You see, we can see the works of Jesus in our lives. We can see Jesus at work amid the pandemics. Truth be told, Jesus is at work right now providing vaccines and slowing the spread of the virus. Jesus is at work in the hearts of people, changing and enacting more just and fair laws. We see Jesus healing and delivering folks right now. We see Jesus saving people and helping folks to get their priorities straight. We see Jesus comforting the grieved, the bereaved, and the mourning. To see Jesus is to see and experience love, peace, joy, hope that Jesus brought into this world at his birth. To see Jesus is to see the light in all the darkness of the world. To see Jesus is to see a better and brighter days ahead. To see Jesus is to see the glory of the Lord. To see Jesus is to see the author and the finisher of your faith. To see Jesus is to see where God is at work in the world. To see Jesus is to experience a peace that passes all understanding. To see Jesus is to experience a love that covers a multitude of sin. To see Jesus is to know grace and mercy has brought you this far on the journey. To see Jesus is to be able to come to the throne of grace and seek help in times of trouble. To see Jesus, uh, that, that ought to be our goal is to see Jesus, not to listen to all the pundits and what they have to say about what's going on, but to see Jesus, to see what is Jesus doing in the midst of all of this, to see the love, to see the care, to see the protection, to see the provision, to see the joy, to see the peace. Oh yeah, to see Jesus, that ought to be what we want is to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Anna wanted to see Jesus. Simeon wanted to see Jesus. And when he saw Jesus, he said, it's all right. You can let me go now. I'm all right. I fulfilled what the calling on my life was to see Jesus, to bless Joseph and Mary, and to speak a word, a prophetic word to Mary. To see Jesus is to see the goodness in the world. To see Jesus is to see God at work. Hallelujah. 
the doors of the church are open. And maybe someone this morning that does not know this Jesus, has not seen this Jesus. Uh, 2020 has clouded their view, their vision. And this morning you want God to open your eyes that you may see Jesus, that you may see the work that Jesus is doing in your life and in the world. All you have to do is invite Jesus into your heart, invite Jesus into your life, and you will see a change. You will see a difference in how you see the world and how you see and experience life. The doors are open. If you'd like to see Jesus, raise your hands this morning. And we will have prayer with you. We will pray the prayer of salvation. Uh, we will pray with you this morning. If you want to see Jesus, hallelujah. Just invite him into your life. Invite him into your heart. Amen. 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 Praise God. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord, Lord turn to you, his face towards you, and give you peace. May you see Jesus. Bless you. Amen.